right, it's Friday night and I am making a quick trip to the ranch to do a little hog hunting and some chores. I'll just stay one night, come back tomorrow. Sunday's Easter, so I gotta get home with the family. But my goal tonight is to do some pig hunting. I'm gonna take the bow across the creek. Got a pretty good wind, at least 10 miles an hour coming out of the south, which is really good. I'm gonna sit with a good little distance from the feeder, but if I see some hogs show up, I plan on trying to stock my way in a little bit. But with this kind of wind, I, I think I'm pretty safe to do that. So that's the plan anyways. We'll see if it works. Uh, if anything, hopefully something shows up. I ain't been out here in a while and uh, I just really get the urge to do some hog hunting. So hopefully it goes well.
pretty cool. Crossed the creek and went to the front feeder and there was about eight hogs. I had a perfect wind. I tried to get up on them, but it was either me or they were just done eating over there and they left. Well, I stayed over there at that front feeder and from a distance, I could hear some type of loud squealing. So I walked on over to the other feeder and sure enough, the same group of hogs went over to the other feeder to finish eating. Well, I didn't have a great shot. I had to shoot through some thicket, but um, I found a little opening and it was about 50 yards. Only problem is I shot the pig a little bit far back. So anyways, I'm not gonna go looking after him. Uh, that was a group of some pretty big pigs, so I'm gonna leave them alone and uh, head back to the camper and probably come back in, uh, in a couple hours with the ranger and see if I find any blood. Heavy. Got us another little boar hog. Uh, probably a couple year old boar hog. He came out right around 9 30. 
I was in the camper checking uh, pictures on the memory card and decided to check to see if the green light was on and sure enough, the green light was on. Came over here with the thermal and uh, knocked them down. So we'll take them over to camp and skin them out. Definitely gonna get the back straps on this one and, uh, and uh, call it a night, get cleaned up and got a lot of chores to do tomorrow. So uh, anyhow, got us a hog. Right, so we killed a hog last night and uh, I've got the back straps in the cooler. I'm gonna season them up and just smoke the back straps while I go mow. So let's get the fire started. So we got all the hair and whatever debris was on the back strap. Now we're gonna go get this silver skin off. So today we're gonna hit this with some kosher salt and pepper. I'm not gonna get too fancy with it. If you use good salt, you don't have to worry about overdoing it. This salt will kind of break the meat down anyways and tenderize it, that's what you want. We're gonna cook it on uh, probably about 250 degrees for about four hours. Next, we'll put some black pepper. This is gonna be the coarse ground. There's some good rubs out there, good seasonings out there, but you can never go wrong with just salt and pepper. All right, now that our fire is getting right, we're gonna let that back strap just kind of sit out and get to room temperature. We'll dump the coals in the baskets, let our temperature get to about 250, Throw the back strap on there and let it go. There it is, seasoned up with salt and pepper. Uh, we've got the grill just below 300 degrees. We want it at 250, but I'm gonna have to throw it on there because I gotta get some stuff done and then get out of here this afternoon. So uh, we're gonna throw this on, let it go for about four hours. Hopefully that temperature will die down to about 250 and then we'll be good. gonna cook one since it's just me out here uh, I've got the other one and I'll save it for the boys at home maybe Sunday night so I shot a hog last night and I didn't really want to go looking for him because I knew I shot him pretty far back but I was using the rage broadhead which 
opens them up pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and just start blood tracking right now, see if we can find any blood. I looked a little bit last night, but it was getting dark and running through that thicket with uh, just yourself and a headlamp gets a little sketchy at times. So came back here this morning while we're mowing. We might as well give it a try and see if we can find them. All right, so this is where I shot them. It's really hard to tell where the opening is, but it's about a 40 yard shot through the through that little swamp area right there. Well, I looked everywhere here and there's absolutely no blood, no blood at all. But when I reviewed the footage on the GoPro, I know he ran this way. Walked over here, tried to see if I could find any blood. Well, last night I did find the arrow and it was sticking right here by this dirt pile. Well, no blood here either, but I did find this little twig or tree limb, whatever you want to call it here, that was stained up from last night. So that was my only sign that he came this direction. There's no more blood anywhere over here. If there is, I can't find it. So what I'm gonna do is just follow the trail where I think the hog might have gone. Um, you can see where they kind of come up and down this area pretty frequently. So there's some trails on the ground. I'm just gonna follow these trails and see where it leads me. Didn't go very far. He's only about 60 yards from where I shot him. Honestly, would have thought he would have ran further than this, being that the shot was so far back. I'm really not sure how he went down so quick. I hit him about here, and he only ran from right in here, down this trail, to here. Well, let's drag him out of here. All right, we've been cooking for a couple hours now. Uh, we're sitting at about 200 degrees, so it's died down a little bit. Let's check it out. Let's see what this looks like. All right, yep, yeah, that was looking good. I think now is a good time to wrap it up. All right, it's been four hours. It's time to pull it off the grill and let it rest. All right, while that rests, we're gonna go fill up the feeders with corn. By the time we get back, that should be well rested and we can give it a taste test.
This is the MB Ranch King Avenger feeder, uh, designed for fish feeding, but works awesome for deer feeding. I've been using this particular feeder for about six years now, and it has not let me down. The great thing about it is, is you can tuck it in the woods. It's a directional feeder, so it doesn't have to sit over your feeding area. It'll throw it out about 20 yards or so, and you can swivel the feeder to throw it in any direction you want so yeah this feeder right here has uh not let me down it's an awesome feeder uh, if if you guys are wondering what kind it is like i said it is an mb ranch king they call it the texas avenger got a solar panel right on top I've had to change this battery once in six years um, so it does a really great job of keeping it charged uh, the benefits of having it on the top is getting the most sunlight possible so uh, it's worked out really well All right, now we're gonna go freshen up some mineral sites. I've got one here at this feeder and I've got one on a trail over on the other side of the property. This is what my mineral sites look like when I'm done. Basically just turn to dirt, throw the minerals in there, uh, and then mix it around. The deer and the hogs and everything else just love it. They'll roll around in it, lick it, uh, spend some time over here. I get a lot of game cam footage uh, having mineral sites. And since I've been on this property about three years now, I've noticed that the antler growth has been uh way better than it was the first year i hunted here so i think it's helping and uh if anything it makes me feel good about what i'm doing out here if i continue to see antler growth and good genetics i feel like i'm doing my part in getting a good deer herd so that i can either set myself up or more importantly set my my boys up to shoot a good one so that's the plan do everything i can to kind of help the herd around here and just have fun hunting Here we go, the moment of truth. We're gonna see if this uh, wild hog back strap cuts up like butter. There 
she is. Got the smoke ring, plenty of juice on the inside. Now let's give it a taste test. Perfect. Salt and pepper is all you need for most meats, guys. There are some good rubs out there, but if you don't have one at the time, salt and pepper is the way to go. Thank you.